we're back. What's up, everybody? Things are well done. Coming at you live this beautiful Corona free day. I wonder how much longer I'm going to say that. You know? But regardless, anyway. Today is uh, Saturday, Saturday, April the 24th at 9.23 in the morning. How are you doing? So, here's the thing. You know, in between action and reaction, there's sort of like that uh, lull moment. You know if you like throw a ball up in the air and it's collecting that energy and it sort of floats for like a second, you know, before it comes back down? I'm not saying in a negative way, I'm just saying as far as gravity, plain and simple, right? Well, that's kind of where I'm at right now as far as my creativity and comedy goes because I'm doing a lot of new writing um, and I do something called pressure testing, whatever, somebody else calls it something else, this is what I call it, which is basically getting rid of confirmation bias that something is funny to me and making sure that it is funny with someone else, with other people, etc., etc. Um, it starts off small by talking about a topic, a premise, an idea, you know, and then I get more granular, and then I just uh, shake loose everything that doesn't work and keep what sticks. That's pretty much it, in a nutshell. Um, and uh, I've been working on like a lot of new material having to do with me uh, living in Russia, which I did do. Random, but true. Um, and uh, to be honest with you, I, I don't got a whole lot going on right now. I, I don't like going to a comedy club and trying out new material that isn't vetted. I learned that lesson. Uh, I was out in Austin. There was, uh, near Austin, Texas. There's probably about 800 people to a show, at the show. And um, I tried a lot of new stuff. First go round. First go round. Um, and some hit, and some missed. I know at a higher level, as a professional comedian, this is something that needs to be done. You're trying out new stuff on the road constantly. Well, at my level, or even in general, I feel like I feel like before you take something out on stage, it could be filtered out some way. You know, if you say like a one-liner, the checkout line, or something like that, um, or just like an interesting conversation that you don't let someone know it's going to be a joke. You just talk with them and just see what's there. You know, and I feel like if you just sort of talk about a, a topic without actually saying the purpose, the reason you're talking about it, if you have a friend, they'll listen to you and they'll engage conversation. And maybe something they'll say, you'll say, or combined, uh, something funny will happen. Something funny will arise. But if it's just completely in the water and stagnant and not moving, I'm pretty sure at that point you know that you can go on. And yeah, that's what's so interesting about comedy is that you know you could be, you could have an amazing voice have an amazing uh, writer, okay? And you could essentially have a hit between your beautiful voice and great lyrics and um, essentially just not ever even try it out and, and it will, you know it will be a banger. You know it will be amazing. Um, but unlike comedy, you literally have to build back. You have to build off of the uh, the feedback of something working. And that's something that, that I now... Um, harp on. I, I do constantly now. I go line by line, sentence by sentence, and I make sure everything that I'm saying is effective so I'm not building off of a you know, piece of shit. Pardon my French. Um, and uh, right now, I'm at the earliest stages of working out material. I'm still coming up with ideas. I'm still getting the dialogue down into my writing because basically like this, you know how you can like if you've ever done any sort of like creative writing, um, especially a dialogue between two individuals, you know enough of whatever language you speak to know when something just doesn't sound right, it doesn't sound conversational, it doesn't, it kind of sounds off, or maybe since you're the one that's going to be saying it, if it is something that you would be saying, uh, it's not coming out naturally the way you would say it. So generally, I try to have things be said in the way that I would say when I'm responding or saying something. And then the way that I know someone else would say it, or ideally, that like a crowd would understand a concept or a premise. Um, and it helps me a lot, not just also with the uh, memorization, because I'm basically remembering um, uh, verbatim, yes, but uh, something close to stylistically how I would talk anyway. You know, I feel like there's certain comedians that um, 
But that's actually what's called uh, your voice. Your voice as far as comedy goes. Um, and it pretty much means stylistically what people think of when they come to see you before they even uh, hear you speak a word. They know if they, they see this guy, if they see me or whichever individual, kind of an idea what you're going to get. For me, it's going to be a little bit aggressive. It's going to be um, uh, uh, very, uh, and I'm not bo uh, boasting myself, it's going to be unique. It's going to be uh, something that will, not just the premise that will catch your attention, but I work very, very hard to have every single line in that, every single example, uh, even the way that I, I move my actions to illustrate um, a story because I feel like there's so many parts. Have you ever uh, known someone they can tell a really good story and uh, between the, the pitch of their voice and the way they move and they're kind of like acting it out and they're going back and forth. All those elements, in my opinion, are, are important. Now, there are some people that are very still. There are, very, there are some comedians that when they tell stories, are they're all over the place. And they're kind of selling their actions. But me, I believe that uh, in a lot of balance, I believe it's all important. And I feel like in the exact way you deliver communication, you have to deliver it in a way that the most amount of people can also receive it. So I try to add like a little ingredient of absolutely everything between being very clear in my words, clear in my actions, my reactions, everything you could essentially imagine, but I've also gone as, I'm getting a little deep, but anyway, I've also gone as far as um, um, even like the subtleties and stuff, like those, those gaps of silence, all that stuff is needed because in a normal conversation, it's not a speech. There's lulls of conversation. There's pauses. And typically, if you say something outlandish, like it's something just like off the wall crazy, they don't even respond. They just look at you like, you know? So um, that's where I'm at right now. I'm in the creative process. It's like if there was a hump, like an arc, the top of the arc is basically like when everything is like perfect. And the bottom of the arc swinging up is like when I'm still figuring things out. I'm at that bottom of the arc, but I'm, I'm trying to work my way up because I got like a new, I got all this new information about from when I lived in Russia, which and to me, in my opinion, is very unique because um, uh, not that many individuals that haven't lived in Russia have lived in Russia. Now you could apply that concept to anybody, Mexico, et cetera, et cetera, but Country for country, Russia is not on the most visited uh, tourist spots by any means. Okay, um, and uh, yeah, I, I live there. Um, I studied there. I went to college, and um, in a very light way, someone made a small comment with no, more than likely, no intended big reaction. But it, they had a small action and they just made a comment that that was a really, really unique, uh, like two sentences that I had said about living in Russia. It was just like a small, quick little thing in, in this, I call it my introductory set, which is like a 10 minute set just about me so the crowd gets to know me and stuff like that. And after a show, somebody said like, hey, like, you know, that Russian stuff was really funny. And I was telling myself that I only said two sentences of it and that's what they remember the most. So now I've taken each sentence and I've literally broken it up in about 10 minute segments. So I got like 20 minutes that I'm working on. But again, it all comes down to uh, not just my actions, not just my reactions, but it kind of starts off with the wording. And um, I'll say stuff to myself over and over and over and over again until I feel like, I feel like if you do things through repetition, if you continue to do it and you continue to do it after a while, subconsciously, you're sort of like self-correct things. It's really weird how, how problem solving works within you. Um, or at least that's just what happens for me. And I continue to say something over and over again to myself. Um, and there's just something, there's like a, a, a weird point that just something doesn't feel right. It doesn't sound right. Um, but when you're having the ideas with yourself, and you don't have anybody to point it out, it's that much more um, uh, challenging to really understand and to really pay attention to hear what's not correct when you're going through your own dialogue of two different individuals or more uh, just by yourself, you know? It's really complicated, but then again, it's extremely simple. 
and I'm not trying to digress or anything, but um, all I'm saying is, is that creatively, that's where I'm at right now. I am really, really excited to talk about this new stuff, um, but um, I I'm, I'm purposely not booking shows um, until I get this I get this down because I every show that I book I want to leave a memorable positive impression and I'm not naming names but um, you know you could do tons of shows and have half-assed material and you'll be known as a half-assed comedian you know uh, or or whatever it is that you might be you know shooting uh, some basketball or uh, going to the firing range and shooting some targets um, and I, I'm a big big believer in quality first I've always, um, in my opinion, I've loved like the rapper, the artist, musician, whatever. Um, it's two things, not just consistent, but also doesn't, doesn't come out with material, uh, based off of a, a date because they feel like they're forced to. If something isn't ready for me, I'll hold off on it. But the thing is, here's what I'm getting at. If you're even listening up at this point. There's certain people, musicians, comedians, actors, whatever it may be, okay, take a pick, that once a year, it's like they have to come out with a new hour of comedy, or once a year, they have to come out with a new album of music, just to stay relevant. Um, and some people can do one of two things with that, with that premise, right? You could either A... Um, understand that except that you want to do something once a year okay um, and it's not that quality or B you feel like there's a certain fire that's burning which is myself in this case like I need to get something completed okay but it has to be good so you work through that creative wall having nothing stopping you um, until you you make your goal and maybe you make it before of course that would be great um, and there's two sides of that. I'd rather come out with something with positive pressure, making uh, making a diamond, something that's very like uh, uh, unique and beautiful and great and amazing, as opposed to doing multiple shows and getting well known, but not not in a good positive light. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm doing essentially, essentially creatively. Um, there's also those uh, uh, artists, comedians, actors, whatever that are in very few films or make very few albums because um, maybe they don't have that fire pressure added. And without any criticism, they come out with great stuff, you know, not naming names, but they're so infrequent with their material. And whenever they come out, it's always something great. But maybe one of two things, again, maybe it takes them a long while to come up with something or maybe they're just not pressuring themselves hard enough to come out with quality material. Because I don't stop about this. I love comedy. I'm so passionate about it. Um, and uh, I'm really excited. So, as always, this is you getting to know me just a little bit and what's going on, where I'm at. And um, hopefully, hopefully, um, through this, uh, like I said, you get to know me better. And when I'm out on stage, you'll know that it's it's some good shit. You know, I do my my testing, as I call it. I got different layers, but it kind of starts off within, and then it branches out to a close friend of mine. And uh, then I'll take it to the streets, grocery store, gas station, one liner here, one liner there. Um, then I'll go to bus stations, and I'll do like five or 10 minutes of straight up a com comedy at a bus station. It may sound crazy, but it works. And then when I take it onto the stage, if you see me on stage, which you will, you better know it's already worked out, it's vetted, and I, I come ready. I stay ready. So, anyway, with that being mentioned, I love you all. Thank you for the support. It's a weird thing, and I wish that YouTube would would also, in a weird way, uh, show the amount of listeners that I have on all these streaming platforms as opposed to YouTube, because YouTube is visual, uh, and I, I get that. It's common sense, but um, I got a lot more listeners uh, than I do uh, viewers watching this I guess if that makes sense so to all everybody and in between love you very much all support I'm binge well done coming to a stage near you soon check me out peace